People often ask us why we educate our kids at home, and today's guest, veteran homeschool mom and entrepreneur, Carrie Davison, will share some of the most important advantages of homeschooling versus brick-and-mortar school. Welcome to Homeschooling Saints, the podcast that helps you create the homeschool you love for the people you love. Our host is Lisa Maladnik, a Catholic life coach, TV host, best-selling author, and an instructor at Homeschool Connections. Before we get started, remember to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're watching on YouTube, click the bell to join our channel. Hello and welcome. I'm Lisa Maladnik, your host, and we're talking today with Carrie Davison about some of the advantages of homeschooling versus brick-and-mortar schools. Carrie Davison has been married for 34 years to Ken, and they have been homeschooling for 25 years. They have eight children, ages 15 to 29, and four grandchildren. Together with their family, they founded Holy Heroes 16 years ago. The Davisons publish and produce Catholic book and saint audio stories, most notably glory stories. And we're going to talk today about more of their resources. You can find Carrie and all their beautiful products at holyheroes.com, and I'll I'll also be including Carrie's direct email at Holy Heroes in the show notes. Carrie, thanks so much for coming back again. It's good to see you. Happy to be here. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Uh, I love this topic. Um, we're talking today about the advantages of homeschooling compared with having our children in a regular school. So if you don't mind, Carrie, step us into what motivated you and your husband to start homeschooling your own family. Uh, when we we were first becoming Catholic. And uh, so 25 years ago, uh, we had to decide where our daughter was going to school. And I started looking around and I didn't know much about being Catholic, but I didn't know what I didn't want. And I started looking, we lived in a very progressive part of the country, which actually now the entire country is exactly the same. At the time that was unusual. And I just saw what they were reading out loud to the kids in the kindergarten. And I just said, that's a non-starter. That's not going to happen. And I said, okay, that's not going to work. And I went to the Catholic school. I went to the local Catholic school. And it just didn't seem right either. And I was kind of thinking, okay, maybe I could work with this. Maybe this might work. And it, something was not right. And I just decided, okay, we're going to keep looking. And I kept looking and looking. I met a bunch of homeschool moms. There was this evangelical Christian family down the street from us, and they homeschooled. So that kind of made, I saw that. And I thought, oh, and they were lovely. And in fact, they were the people who first evangelized us to becoming Christians. And we shot right past them into the Catholic Church. And then we, <laughs> then we, so I saw their family and I knew that they had a beautiful family. And that opened the, the prospect of being of homeschooling. And then I found a bunch of Catholics who homeschooled and they were very helpful and lovely people and lovely women. And that's where we ended up. But really a lot of it was in the beginning was because I wanted to uh, avoid what, what was being taught in the kindergarten. And so yeah. now I'm sure it's much worse for everyone. So um especially in those early years. And, you know, it's so interesting to me now when I think about it, because I didn't know this now. So I had heard about natural law uh, when I was in law school, in fact. And of course, it was all uh, in a very derogatory light. It was painted. I didn't even know what people were talking about, frankly. I had no idea. And I was like, okay, whatever. That's some weird thing. Don't know what it is. But it's so interesting to me all these years later that I... Um, naturally knew what I needed for my children. Like I naturally could tell like what is in line with God. So now you read the catechism and the catechism will tell you that up into the age of reason, all of these things, children should not be exposed to them. All of these things that, that go against nature and, uh, and the natural idea of a mother and a father raising children. And I didn't know that. I didn't know about the catechism at the time. I didn't know about natural law, but it was still inside of me. That's why it's called natural law, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what actually started it. And then um, we just continued on. And I didn't really think of it as some kind of thing I would do for a long time. 
I didn't know what was going to happen, but it kind of unfolded as the years went by. And it really, I, it's such a blessing now. And I thank God that we were put in that situation, I'm, you know, and it was obviously God who had those neighbors down the street and had us come into the church when we did and everything. And uh, I, I recently was, uh, a priest was recently saying, God will use the grace um, when it is most efficacious. So he gives us grace when it is going to take the greatest effect for hmm. our lives. Like and that. I was thinking, that's amazing. I mean, that's an amazing way to express it. And um, I think that's what happened there. Because, you know, I, I'm not, we're not the kind of, we, we are not, we were not predisposed to this. And um, I just think it was God who, who took us there. Mm. Yeah, and, that's and people, really neat. people along the way who helped, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting the way as our own vision for ourselves and our families emerges, um, or and and the people there are people that God sends pre-vision -pre to help ignite it, and then kind of while the vision is developing to help encourage it along. I love what you said about God sending the graces at just the right, the most efficacious moment. It helps right. us to kind of have that sense of trust in God's timing for things. I agree. And I agree this would happen here. And I think along the way, I saw, I started to see, especially when they were younger, as they started to get older. Well, actually, I see it much more now when they're older. But when they were younger, I could see that it, it was a really efficient way for me to teach and it was also let me do whatever I wanted I mean there's so much room for fun when the kids are little and so much room for exploring and so much room for uh, family making and bond and building up bonds among the children and just basically living your life in a, a beautiful way when they're little kids it is of course as they get older and you have to get more serious about academics you know you have to kind of work out that in a different way but when they're little oh my goodness you, there's so many things you can do. And I, I, I feel sad, and I'm going to say this over and over again, because I always do. For these moms of elementary school kids, say 10 and under, do not worry about it. Do not worry about the academics. Just get some basic stuff done and enjoy your family. Live the liturgical year. That's the big advantage to homeschooling is that you can live the liturgical year. It becomes very difficult in schools, and even in good Catholic schools, to live the liturgical year. And because it's it, it's all when you go into a school, a uh, Catholic school, good Catholic school, you're going to be expected to volunteer and to fundraise and do all these things. And it really takes a lot of time. <laughs> In addition, you know, people think they're just dropping their child off and oh, that's it. No, when you when you, you know, send your kid to the Catholic school, you've joined that Catholic school community and you will be expected to work in it and to build it up as as you know, as is expected in any community. Um, but I don't think people always say, oh, oh, now I get it. That's why. So I saw that among a lot of my friends who were sending their kids to these schools. And they said, wow, it's a big commitment. It's a lot of time. So I have to go and get them ready for school, get them out in the morning, get them into school. Then I have to volunteer. Then I go home. Then I have to come back and wait in line to pick them up and get them in the car. Then I bring them home. Then we do homework. You know, and then I'm trying to make dinner. And I was like, wow, okay, this sounds, you know, and that is not at all the life of, that's not been my life as a homeschooler. It's been very much, sure, we, we can go out to mass, we can, I'm not saying it's all easy, like who wants easy? This is not at all easy, but I'm saying it's more effective. It, your time is used in a more effective way rather than waiting in the car pickup line. You're actually doing stuff. You're actually teaching your kids or you're, you know, cooking or you're cleaning or you're doing something that's, you know, beneficial to your family. Mm -hmm. So you're really discovering the gift of time, time that then you can shape and prioritize according to the values of your family. Yes, very much so. And also there's the opportunity to use so much fun stuff and learn. I mean, I know that all right, everyone's not really excited about curriculum. Okay. And I, 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 get, I get that. Okay. <laughs> but we're concerned about it, even when we're yes. not excited about it. <laughs> so but I think no matter what you use, okay, you know, I know some people slam workbooks. I, I think workbooks are great because you can get a lot of information in a small amount of time, um, especially if you have a big family. Everyone's got, you know, let's see what we can get through. But it doesn't have to be all workbooks. 
you know, and people who use workbooks know that, okay, we've already done this, or this is dry, or this is, we'll just get the basics and we'll use other stuff. People who are all creative and do all this stuff, sometimes they have to step back and say, this is, this is totally, you know, directionless maybe. And I feel like I need a little more direction. So maybe I'm going to get a syllabus. So like you have all that flexibility to do all these things and use fun things and find things. And so um, I think that's a huge advantage to the schools because they are very much set in what they're doing as they should be, because they have, they should be telling parents in the beginning what they're going to do. And here's how we do it. And you should be able to rely on that because they're teaching a whole group of people. Um, But that's not how it has to be with homeschooling. You start using something and it's, you hate it. And you think this is, I, I, you know, my, my rule of thumb always was if I can't stand it, I don't know how my, I can't make my kids stand it. You know, this is making me crazy or this is so boring. I can't bear to even talk about it. Or actually what more likely for me, what happens is if I hate something, I just never get around to it. If you have a subject that you are never getting around to it, you need to, that's the wrong, you're doing the something wrong. You need to change that. Yeah, and we can ask each other for help, too. I remember when I first started homeschooling, our daughter was in the public school until through the end of fourth grade. We, Charlie and I had been talking about I wanted to homeschool before she was born. So it took that long to get both on the same page. But I, uh, you know, panicked and bought a box, and it was a day by day, and it was way more than we could do in a day. And I was, oh, this poor kid was so stuck at the table and, and uh, miserable. And so we went to visit another homeschooling family we were just getting to know with a girl her age. And while they got to know each other, I got to look at all her creative and fun and varied resources. And she also had kind of certain kinds of things. That's, That's my point is just that we figure it out as we go along. What's right for our kid? What's right for our family? How do we fill in the gaps? We talk to each other. Who? What was it like for you as a mom stepping into this kind of getting your bearings, being able to trust your own judgment, starting to find the resources that you liked? Uh, I was very blessed that I was in a place with, and this is all pre-internet, so there was no searching on the internet, which actually, I think about it now, that was probably a blessing too. Um, So someone in our church organized a panel of homeschool moms, and there were probably... uh, 10 moms up there and they started with like on one side. So it was like a all different size families. So they started with smaller families over here, middle sized families and these huge families on the, on the other side. And it was so interesting. I mean, you, you no one, no one left that room for hours because these women and the moderator was a very clever woman too. She went through each, each mother. Okay. Tell me what you do for kindergarten. Tell me what you do for. And she went through all these moms and, so I'll tell you the most hilarious thing and the thing that changed my life here, because I had a little tiny family at the time. I was pregnant with, with my third child. And so I only had like one that I was actually trying to figure out what to do with her. And so I was listening intently to these women, the beginning women, and they had one, two, three kids, maybe. And then she went around the table and they got to a, fr- and a woman I knew actually, and she had 10 children and she was the beginning of like these big families. And they were, so, so they said, what do you do for kindergarten? And she said, I don't do kindergarten. And, I, and then, and then because she said that all these other, afterward, all the other fa- mothers said, I don't do kindergarten. I don't do kindergarten. And she was like, okay, we went back to first grade. The same thing happened. You got to the mother of 10 and she said, what do you do for first grade? And she said, I don't do first grade. And I was like, oh, and then she asked the other moms, I don't do first grade. I don't do first grade. All the mothers, like, you know, some woman there with 14 children and she said, no first grade. And so we went to second grade and I was like, everyone's listening. We get to my friend, Mary again. What do you do for second grade? And she, it came right out of her mouth. She said, I don't do second grade. And so everyone just like, everything just stopped right there. And she's like, okay, we need to talk over here. Like, tell me what is happening. What is this all about? And what really came out of this for these mothers and even, well, the funny thing was you could see it going to the mothers of like five kids. They were like, what do you do for, you know, second grade, first grade? They were like, uh, I have a workbook and, uh, some flashcards, you know, it was starting to be like, and then it really came down to, for these mothers of big families. But really when we went back and refreshed the whole thing, 
tons of the smaller families started to admit this. The reality is until they're about, until they're a bit older, you don't really, what do they learn? They need to learn their prayers. They need to learn their chores. They need to, you know, learn how to live in a family and to uh, negotiate all the things in a family and they need to play. So, and because of the big families, because it's a necessity, because they don't have a choice, as they said, we don't have a choice here. We have children in high school that we're trying to move into the world. So when do I teach my kids to read? I teach them to read when they're ready to read. You know, when they're ready is when I teach them to read. And that usually for a lot of kids, no, I'm not saying I've had kids learn to read at four, but for half of my kids, it was eight. And that's just the way it is. So really what came out of that is that who is willing to admit first that the reality of their school is it's not that straightforward. It's, mm-hmm. It happens on a need, you know, as the needs of the family arise and the needs of the children, you know, are fulfilled. And so it was a very interesting thing. So that kind of changed my whole perspective on things that you have to slot a kid into a grade and they must do that work in that grade. And I realized that's not the case here. You don't do that. You do, you know, you may have an early reader, you may have some crazy reader that you can just, you know, have her reading like crazy. And you, yet you may have another child who doesn't read till they're eight or nine. And the interesting thing in my family is the early readers and the very late readers were all about the same by the time they were 12. Mm-hmm. You know? right. it, and, you know, they were all kind of doing different things, but they all kind of caught up. And it's not like I was all loosey goosey with their school because I wasn't. But I, that really changed my my um, my perspective on how the advantages of homeschooling, which is that all of these families, it was also the needs of the family, but it was also kind of slotted in with the needs of the child and how they all just kind of worked it out in the whole messiness of family life. Believe me, all those kids learned to read. They all learned their math. They all learned what they needed to learn to get where they wanted to be. But it doesn't, it's not a very straightforward, what do you do for third grade? You know, tell me. And then, and you know, and that's what really came out of that whole meeting. Yeah. And also, and it also taught me, okay, relax. Although I, it took me many years and just an actual experience to learn that that was correct. You know, because it's very hard when you're dealing with the education of your children to just be like, ah, whatever. You know, you, you really want to be on top of things. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that it started to set you free to think of home education as as education rather than school at home, where we're on the same framework. We're just doing right. it in a different location. Um, I want to uh, I want to get into more of the advantages that have been important to you and your family uh, right after this short break from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Walter Crawford, and I'm Maureen Whitman. We are the co-founders of homeschoolconnections.com and proud sponsors of the Homeschooling Saints podcast. Which is here to help you homeschool more joyfully, more easily, and more effectively. We want to thank you for listening. And we invite you to check out our courses at homeschoolconnections.com. And now back to our program. All right, we're back with Carrie Davison, and we're talking about advantages of homeschooling uh, versus the brick and mortar school kind of regular school experience. And Carrie, I'd just love to hear um, a little bit more about the particulars of some of the things that you were able to do with your family that you couldn't have done in a regular school. Where where have those advantages showed up, especially for your family? Um, probably mostly in the liturgical year, living the liturgical year. So, um, and back that's where Holy Heroes came out of was the whole idea of how do you live your faith? What is Advent? How do you live Advent? How do you live Lent? You know, and that's where the free Holy Heroes Advent Adventure Lent Adventure started was how, how are we, how are we doing this as a family? What is first Friday? How do we do that? First Saturday? How do we do that? All these things that, um, I would never have had the time or the energy to do them if my kids were in school. And because they were home and we had, when we were together, and so it was like a one shot for everyone, you know, we were able to do it, all of it versus if there were kids in schools and different schools and I were running back and forth, picking people up and having to address homework for each individual child that never would have happened because Mm. who who has time for that? And, um, I think that really has borne fruit in my children because they, um, 
very much are very um, uh, attentive and, you know, and they're not the ones who are out in the world. They're, you know, going to mass and their holy day of obligation. They know it there and they, they're there. Um, even the ones who have really interesting and kind of extreme conflicts, the things that they have done to make sure they get to mass. And um, I'm, it would just, you know, it makes, you know, almost like my heart is going to explode when I hear these stories, you know, mm. from, from them. Um, mm-hmm. And so that's what I think is the, the primary and most important thing that's happened. I mean, there have been other things, tons of other things academically that they never would have achieved, I think, had they been in school. Um, there's also just who they became, like things that they volunteered for and they were active in that I, I just, there's no way they would have had the time. And because, you know, the, the benefit of homeschooling, so when, when our kids, when they're doing something, when they're involved in something, so the one thing uh, four of our daughters have done now, it's a, it's a program through the county and uh, they, they, they work in this and because they are able to move their school schedule around and do whatever they have to do to show up and work there, they, they have gained so much experience and, uh, because they're not tied to a school schedule, you know, and they're much more reliable than any of the other children who do this. And so I, I, I can see how that's so beneficial. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they can actually be more involved in the community, get more real life work experience, live their faith. Um, and you mentioned too, that your your kids have had really some kind of heart I don't want to say exploding, but heart swelling uh, stories of how their lives play out when they p- place mass at the center of their lives, where that dedication yes. to our Lord is there. Just so exciting to hear these things, Carrie. Yeah. So, so would you mind just telling us a little bit about, since obviously Holy Heroes, your whole company emerged out of this love of the liturgical year, celebrating it with your kids. And, and that's one thing too that we've talked about in the past, but I want to highlight. You said in the early part of this interview that you could have a lot more fun with your kids. And I feel like a lot of your Holy Heroes stuff does that. It taps into the joy and the celebration of our faith. Would you mind just telling us about some of your resources that our families might be interested in incorporating? Oh, absolutely, yes. Um, That is part of, as we're as a family learning to live the liturgical year and realizing what we did not know. And so we have priest friends and they kind of helped us put a lot of stuff together and we started and we started with advent adventure how to how to live advent what is advent because advent has become all about chocolate calendars and you know i actually saw like a different different kinds of gin like you can buy a different <laughs> flavor of gin for every day of advent oh no <laughs> that's that's for real and like you know disney soft <laughs> calendar and all these ridiculous things that is not has nothing to do with Advent. It has nothing to do with preparing yourself for Christ. In fact, it's kind of like counterproductive because it's like Christmas before Christmas. And that's what Advent is supposed to not be. And so we started <laughs> off with Advent Adventure and my kids loved it. I mean, just the whole idea of, of having a, a th- like a, a mission of what Advent is. Mm-hmm. And that's really what Advent Adventure became. And then we started doing things like um, first... Uh, uh, first Saturdays, and then we have like you know, so you can take your kids to first Saturdays and you know, devotion to the Our Lady, and we have stickers with first Saturday, so you your kids can get really excited about filling this in and getting all the promises that the Blessed Mother made to the children of Fatima. You know, mm. she made these promises to other children, and the same with the Jesse tree in Evan. You know, I I tried to do the Jesse tree for so many years. I, it's, it's, it's very difficult to do that well and never finished. And I'm like, okay, we're doing this. So we actually made it. So your kids can actually do it themselves. Stickers, Jesse tree, watch this little video. Here's the reading. If you want to do the reading, if not, your kids get it in the little, the little video. So while you're making dinner, this can happen in your family. And that's what a lot of this is about. And the same with Lent. The Lent is Lent is long. Lent is hard. Okay. And this kind of powers you through it to, to get to the meat of Lent and wh- where you're supposed to be with your family. 
Because what kinds it's, of resources are involved with the Lent program? Because we got a really nice, um, we we talked with your daughter a few weeks back, and and she gave us more on the the Advent series, which a lot of that's free stuff, guys. Um, but step us into your Lenten program. What do we get for our families to use for Lent? Uh, so there's a Lenten uh, roadmap to Easter, which is a, and it's like a code, and and they, you know, every day there's a sticker. And um, there's emails and prayers. And this is what is really, I, I actually think this is awesome. So you can learn, your kids can pray along with other kids. So they can pray along the, um, the decade of the rosary, decade a day. They can pray all their prayers. They can learn Latin hymns. They can learn the Regina Chaley and all this after, after Easter. So I'm saying all of this is there. And there's tons of, of you just, you get your email, you open it up, you click on that. They can sit there and just pray. They can listen to the um, the lesson for the day, which is you know usually a little video. There's download pages for activities and crafts, and so it's like multi. So you can get everything from a coloring page to Bible verses for older children. So it's a very um, so we have friends. I have friends who what they do during Lent for um, catechism is Lenten adventure, and the same thing with Advent adventure. So this is what we do for Lent. This is our catechism. And you learn so much. And also every year we add to it, we change it up a little bit. And um, it's been a wonderful thing. And we also sell other, we sell, uh, those are all free. So Lenten Adventure and Advent Adventure are free. And it's okay. guided all the way through, just to be sure everyone understands. Yes. You don't have to figure it out. It no. comes into your inbox with all the resources and the options, and it guides yes. you right along at no charge. Yes, you don't have to figure it's it's very intuitive. So which is why a lot of people just leave their kids here, just do this. Mm -hmm. And you know, just click if you have a mouse and you pull this up <laughs> on the screen, you just click through. And so it's yeah. very um it's easy is what I'm saying. And it's meaty and there's a lot in it. And it's free. And there's so I I I can't recommend these enough. Well, you know, partially because I help make them, but also because I live them. You know, so I had all these little kids, so I know exactly what this was like to have all these kids and to be like, oh, in swimming and all these different catechism books and trying to get everyone to learn their their stuff. And oh, now we're in Lent. There's more. I remember thinking this when my kids were little. I just remember thinking these Protestants have it so easy, man. They don't. <laughs> I I know that sounds <laughs> ridiculous, but I remember that crossing my mind. <laughs> Thinking they don't have anything to learn, do they? They don't. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of joking, but it crossed my mind at the time that you know, I it's just a different life, and so this was this was meant to be helpful, and mm -hmm. so we have we have a lot of that. I we also have actually, I'm going to tell you about this. We also have new books that really nobody knows about, which I am so madly in love with. It's called very. It's a very young Catholic series, and what it is is. Uh, every time this is, this is meant to show children and it does show children that every time zone on the earth, 24, 24 different time zones, there are Catholics in every time zone. And so these books, like this one is from Taiwan and it shows where Taiwan is and the culture of Taiwan and all the magnificent pictures of Taiwan, which are extraordinary actually and highlights a particular family in that time zone yes each, each one highlights a particular family like this kenya wow. one just, you know, there's another family tons of animals in this this one in taiwan this one in india and what oh. they do with this is it's also geography so it shows them where they are and it shows the catholic practices of the people the, this family and how they practice their faith in india how they practice their faith in kenya how they practice their faith in taiwan and it really points to, of course, the universal church, but it also shows children how this is all about geography, too, and the, and the culture and the animals and the food and everything they eat. Um, but it also shows the universal church that all these different people and all these different languages and all these different Catholic practices, because these books are also each one has a different catechetical point in it, are all part of the universal church. And it's just so fascinating. And I was looking at this saying, um, uh, this is amazing. I I've never seen a book like this before, which is why we now produce them. And that actually and, uh, the author's name. Give us her oh, name. Oh, uh, Emily Casella, and she's like a brilliant woman who figured who 
who figured this all out and she goes to all these different countries, one in, in a different time zone. And she finds a family in each time zone and they welcome her into their home. And she talks to them about their faith and she takes pictures and she spends time in the country and she learns about the particular um, Catholic devotions that they do. It's just very interesting. And, wow. they're be- and they're magnificently beautiful. So this is like, this is when we're talking about opportunity to, opportunities in homeschooling you can choose these this type of material that you can actually have your kids experience something so i mean i'm an adult and i'm i've read these books through and i and i and i uh, i think i told you beforehand i i was so in love with them and i told you i gave them to a friend of mine i'm like here just take a look at this book what, what do you think about it and this friend was like i'm completely in love with this family i know this sounds weird but like i love these people so much Aww. and <laughs> oh that's beautiful <laughs> And I was saying, I know, I do too. It's just a because um, mm. they're they're beautiful and they're and they're um, Catholic and they're in a beautiful family, and you just want to um, embrace them. And so I just look at this as a another resource of the type of things that you can choose as a homeschooler to choose beautiful things for your children, and um, and and have them really embrace their faith at a young age, but not at the sacrifice of. See, this is the thing i think people think somehow that academically they're going to sacrifice something when choosing homeschooling and and i really want to dispel that that is so far from the truth for for so many of us i i can't tell you um how many very so many homeschoolers i know who are so smart and so accomplished and really i don't think they would have done i know this personally from my own children they i don't believe they would have done as well had I not homeschooled them. Now, I'm not saying that you can't put some of your kids in school or there's periods of time when you have, you know, that just is best for your family. So you really have to do whatever works for your family. That's also part of homeschooling is you do what works for your family. Um, But if you can choose homeschooling, I I recommend it. Yeah. All right. So just to kind of recap a little bit, we talked about the gift of time, about having choices, about being able to respond to the needs and the educational developmental levels of each individual child, which is as God designed them to develop differently. Also, the liturgical year and providing beauty and connection with Catholics all around the world who might be celebrating Mass during every hour of the day. I mean, it boggles the mind the way it might expand your children's sense of connection to this big family of ours, to the communion of saints. What are some final thoughts you'd like to leave us with? And everybody, do find all of these beautiful materials from Holy Heroes at holyheroes.com, and we'll have that in the show notes. We'll also have a direct link to Emily's beautiful series of, what is it, Young Catholics? The, the, the you. series. Very Young Catholics, and this is the photo series that's from around the world. Those will be at her author page in the show notes. But just close us out with your final thoughts. Yeah, I would encourage people who are homeschooling, especially if it's a hard time, because everyone has hard times. But I am going to tell you this. Don't think you won't have hard times even if your kids were in school, because we're all, you know, Every family is going to go through a hard time. There are going to be hard times, perhaps even with each child, depending on how how things go. Um, but I want to encourage you that it's worth the it's worth the the work and sometimes the fight, you know, to 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 really just say, okay. And I I, I went through many years of saying. I remember before there was an internet, I had a phone book, and I would actually turn to the school page in the phone book, and I would look at like all of these schools, and I would say, surely one of these schools would work, you know, for me. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, you know, would, would I over, you know, I would think in that, and they never worked. And eventually I gave that up and I started realizing, you know, this is where God put me. He gave us this opportunity. Let's see where this goes. And it really took us to very good places. And my children, very good places as well. They, um, and my children as, as adults, by the way, have all said, um, some of them very openly, like, thank, thank you for doing this for me. You know, thank you for, for, I can't even believe how fortunate I was that you did this for me. Um, because they realize now in the world, what they had, you know, and then they see amongst their friends, 
that there's a lack, there's a lacking there, that there's a wanting in them. You know, sometimes it's simple things like my kids will say, do you know that no one ever read them the Chronicles of Narnia when they were little? Like they've never even heard of that mom. And then to the point where other, other things where they don't, and another daughter saying to me, you know, they have no idea how to live their life. Like they're, you know, floundering in this world, doing all these things that are, are, are hurting them because they'd have no idea how to live their life. And I was, and I was thinking, what a tragedy. And so, but my daughter recognizes that you taught us how to live our lives, not to say that my children aren't going to make mistakes and, you know, who knows what can come down the road. I'm just saying that they, they recognize how they are supposed to live. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much, Carrie. I always love interviewing you, uh, talking with you about these things. It's good to be in the company of moms who have gone ahead of us, who have raised their families, who are in another season of life. Really, really love having you on. We'll do this again soon, I hope. Everybody, thank you so oh, much for tuning in. I'm sorry, Carrie, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm just thanking you for having me. Okay. Yeah. Great to have you. Great to see you again. Everybody, uh, we'll see you next time on Homeschooling Saints. God bless you, and thanks for joining us. God bless you. Thank you. And that's our show for today. Our program is sponsored by homeschoolconnections.com. Be sure to subscribe to Homeschooling Saints and leave us an honest review. God bless you, and thank you for joining us.